must be wondering what the Master has prepared for us on this first Sunday of the year, what will be the first sermon you hear on this New Year 2023. I call your attention to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 as we consider the heroes of faith. The heroes of faith. Lessons from the heroes of faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, let me first read for you. The Holy Bible says, Now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. For by it our ancestors warned God's approval. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was approved as a righteous man because God approved his gift. And even though he is dead, he still speaks through his faith. By faith, Enoch was taken away and so he did not experience death. He was not to be found because God took him away. For before he was taken away, he was approved as one who pleased God. Now, without faith, it is impossible to please God, since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, after he was warned about what was not yet seen and motivated by godly fear, built an ark to deliver his family. By faith he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and set out for a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance. He went out even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he stayed as a foreigner in a land of promise, living in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, co-heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, even Sarah herself, when she was unable to have children, received power to conceive of spring, even though she was past the age, since she considered that the one who had promised was faithful. Therefore, from the one man, in fact, from one as good as dead, came offspring as numerous as the stars of the sky and as mean innumerable as the grains of sand along the seashore. These all died in faith, although they had not received the things that were promised, but they saw them from a distance, greeted them, and confessed that they were foreigners and temporary residents on the earth. Now those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they were thinking about where they came from, they would have had an opportunity to return, but they now desire a better place, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has promised and prepared a city for them. By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. He received the promises, and yet he was offering his one and only son, the only begotten son, the one to whom it had been said, your offspring will be called through Isaac. He considered God to be able even to raise someone from the dead. Therefore, he received him back, figuratively speaking. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, and he worshipped, leaning on the top of his tongue. By faith, Joseph, as he was nearing the end of his life, mentioned the exodus of the Israelites 
and gave instruction concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, after he was born, was hidden by his parents for three months because they saw that the child was beautiful and they didn't fear the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter and chose to suffer with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasure of sin. For he considered reproach for the sake of Christ to be greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, since he was looking ahead to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt behind, not being afraid of the king's anger. For Moses persevered as one who sees him, who is invisible. By faith, he instituted the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch the Israelites. By faith, they crossed the Red Sea as though they were on dry land. When the Egyptians attempted to do this, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after being marched around by the Israelites for seven days. By faith, they had the prostitute, welcomed the spies in peace, and didn't perish with those who disobeyed. And what more can I say? Time is too short for me to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets who by faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the raging of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, gained strength in weakness, became mighty in battle, and put foreign enemies to flight. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Other people were tortured, not accepting relief, so that they might gain a better resurrection. Others experienced mocking and scourging, as well as bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they died by sword, by the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins, in goatskins, destitute, afflicted, mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and on mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All these were approved through their faith, but they did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, so that they would not be made perfect without us. Beloved brothers and sisters, what do you find in this passage of God's Word? Well, you find a list of people. You find a group of people who had walked with God when they were alive in this world, like you are this morning. They are called to be your heroes of faith. What do you mean by heroes of faith? In other words, they are meant to be your champions. They are meant to be your examples. Instead of having photographs of your favorite actors and actresses, many of them Koreans or even Americans, beloved brothers and sisters, you paste their photo at the back of your door, in your bedroom, whatever, you even have it carried in your wallet or whatever. Beloved brothers and sisters, have these people instead. These are more worthy. They ought to be your heroes of faith. But what do you learn about them for your, for your encouragement in this new year? What should you learn about them? What do you learn about this group of heroes of faith? Were they supermen? No, brothers and sisters. The first thing you realize as I read for you about their life from their life is this, that they face similar human struggles. They had to, to experience that they had to suffer the same human, human miseries and struggles when they were alive. You see, temptation is common to everyone. If you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, you read about these things. It says, No temptation has come upon you except what is common to humanity. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation, He will also provide a way out so that you may be able to bear it. In other words, do not think that 
your situation is so different from others. I have nobody can understand because mine is a special kind of temptation that I'm suffering. That's not true. Everybody, the Bible tells us, if you believe in the Bible, the Bible says every human being will face common temptation. Yours, in terms of details, may be different from others, but others, their details are different from yours too. And we go through the same temptation as we learned here in this list of names mentioned for your uh, uh, ex example here in Hebrews 11. The world today emphasizes so much on seeing is believing. If you cannot see, how can you believe? How can you believe in God whom you cannot see? How can you believe in a future world that you cannot see? Well, are you unique? No, we find that the heroes of faith, they were faced in the same situation. If you turn to Hebrews chapter 11, look at what you are told there in verse 7 about Noah. Noah! By faith, we are told, after he was warned about what was, listen, huh? not yet seen and motiv motivated by godly fear, he built an ark to deliver his family. Not yet seen. In fact, before Noah, there was no such thing as flood. I mean, after Noah, he still, he had never had what is called a universal flood in this world since. And therefore, brothers and sisters, when the world says, only what you can see, you can believe. That's nonsense. There are so many things in life that we have not seen, that we cannot see, that you will believe. I mean, people actually believe when people say, oh, in the year 2023, uh, if you are born a dragon, uh, or born a pig, uh, or you are born a, wow, this is a good year for you, no. Well, this year you sure prosper. Wow, you sure will strike the lottery. Wow, you get promoted. Wow, you will recover from all your life. When people believe. Have they seen or not? No. Then you laugh at a Christian for believing in God whom they cannot see and you believe in all this nonsense that people tell you that you have not experienced. You've been so happy. <laughs> this year I'm going to be okay. How do you know? Well, because I'm born a dragon. So you're a dragon. Well, I'm born a pig. So you are born a pig. So you see the nonsensical ideas that entering people's mind and people say, only what you see you can believe. They themselves don't practice it. Oh, typhoon, 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 and then you can change your faith. That's nonsense, the superstition of the world. Again, look at another example in Hebrews 11 and verse 8. This time, look at Abraham. By faith, Abraham, listen, when he was called, he obeyed and set up a place that he was going to receive as his inheritance. He went out, even though, listen, he did not know where he was going. Contrary to what the world tells you, you can only believe what you can see. Abraham did not live like that. Abraham was a hero of faith. He lived so differently from what the world is calling you to live. We do not follow the world. The world is happy when the stock market goes up. Who oh, are so happy? When the stock market comes out, the world also goes down. The world's happiness is dependent on happening. We Christians, we are happy, we are positive about the future. It's because of Jesus Christ. He has risen from the dead. And He promises us that where He is, we will be. No matter in the meantime, what kind of terrible misery we go through, we have this hope. That misery will end soon and Jesus will come back for us soon. And I hope that you understand this, even though the world can never understand. You see, the world seeks after, the world seeks instant gratification of their flesh. The world wants their reward now. I work for you, I want the pay now. I want my bonus now. I want my instant cash now, instant reward now. I want to enjoy my reward now, not in the future. Remember my father's generation, my mother's generation. They will save and work hard now so that they enjoy when they are older in age. The new generation is better enjoy now. Suffer later, who cares? But when they can enjoy now, what we can do, do now. And so they have no savings. Right? Everything comes in, also go out and more. They borrow money from the bank. They are in debt, credit card debt, all kind of debt. 
unlike previous generation, save, 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 when they are old, can help the children, the grandchildren, can go on holiday. The new generation, when they grow old, they have zero. And they're going to blame the government. And that's so sad. When it's their personal decision to enjoy now and suffer later. Rather than suffer now and enjoy later. We Christians, we are not of this sort. We do not want instant reward, instant gratification. Look at the example of the heroes of faith in chapter 11 of Hebrews. Look at verse 13. How should you live in 2023? Live like that. They say, this or die in faith, although they have not received the things that were promised by God to them. Did Abraham receive the promised land in his lifetime? No, but he believed. But he, you believe, ah, but you still die and you did not receive. But his descendants did. You see, brothers and sisters, we Christians live so differently from the world. No wonder the world can never understand Christians. Then why do you all treasure things that the world has no eye for? Well, because the world cannot see any value. We do! Say the world doesn't love Jesus. We do! The world despised Jesus, mocked Jesus, put Jesus to be crucified on the cross. No us! We love him. We will be willing to die with him. I hope that's your attitude too. What kind of people were the heroes of faith? No, they were people who experienced similar problems like us. Remember Joseph? Joseph was sold into slavery by his jealous brothers. Have you heard of sibling rivalry? Have you heard of families where their brother and sister cannot get along? Have you heard of family, rich families where they fight over the wealth, their inheritance after the father or the mother dies? They fight over the property. They have no mercy on one another. And we always say, Are you? Are you? They are brothers there. How can they be like that? Nothing strange. Remember Joseph. What did he do? They didn't like what he said. What? They didn't like what he said. You sold him away so far away to be a slave in Egypt. Hey, that is too much, right? Your own brother there. Eh? No mercy. He's so young, you know. He could have died, you know. He didn't care. They were so hard and they were monsters. They had no compassion even on their own family members. I hope you are not like that. No mercy. Go to hell, go to hell, ah. none of my problems, go to hell. Ah. You don't care whether they go to hell, whether they become Christians, whether they know the Lord or not. You never pray for them. Beloved brothers and sisters, are you a monster? Look at them. Joseph had every reason to take revenge, you know. Joseph had every reason to punish the brothers for their cruelty. And yet he chose to forgive them. He chose to forgive them, and not only that, he chose to bless their children, his nephews and nieces. What a generous man. What a godly man. What an example of someone who follows Jesus, isn't it? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Isn't it? Shouldn't you be like that, as a hero of faith, as you learn here? Look at Moses. Moses almost died. Please remember that. He almost had no life. Other Hebrew children, the boys of his age, would have been thrown and be killed when they were born immediately. The, bra the father and mother kept him for three months until cannot already show get found out by the police. And so they thought of letting him go and see how the Lord would use him on the river. And he was rescued by Pharaoh's daughter. But he almost died because of government policies. The Egyptian government said no Hebrew boy can live. Moses had every reason not to be alive. But he did because God has a calling for him. You may think, oh, yeah, you are better to, to, to die, but you are not. Please remember, like Moses, God has a calling for you. There is a reason why you are alive. People may say you useless. You got you got no reason, no purpose. You are a disgrace to your family. So, 
That's not what God says about you. God is not somebody who allow you to be one day more when you are no use. God has every use of you, brothers and sisters, for the very fact that you are still alive. Look at what you are told there about Moses. And look at others. Look at chapter 11 of Hebrews, verses 35 to 38. Similar human experiences, human struggles, 35. Women receive their day raised to life again. Other people were tortured, not accepting relief so that they might gain a better resurrection. Others experienced mocking, scourging, as well as bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sought in two. They died by the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin, in goatskin, destitute, afflicted, mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. Brothers and sisters, it is as it were we are reading church history. It is as it were just so recently Christians have experienced all this in China, in Burma, in Indonesia, even right now in so many parts of Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Ukraine, people were all suffering this because they are Christians. Why should you be surprised if your manager at work didn't like you? Why should you be surprised if your people that you think should like you don't like you? Why should you be disappointed? Remember the heroes of faith. They had a common struggle, human suffering. You should not be surprised. You should not expect to be treated differently, especially because you are a Christian. Oh, brothers and sisters, what will the new year 2023 bring you? Look at the example of these heroes of faith, heroes of faith. They did not give up God's promises when they could not see it being fulfilled in their lifetime. Instead, they continue to believe even after they die. They continue to believe in what God has promised. Look at what they are told there, brothers and sisters, in chapter 11 of Hebrews and 39 to verse 40. It says, all these were approved through their faith. But they did not receive what was promised by God. They did not receive. They did not receive the promised land. They did not receive. They did not receive their so-called reward in this lifetime. But they continue to believe. So similarly for you, you must believe. People pray, oh Lord, I got this cancer. Lord, heal me. Oh Lord, if after a few months the cancer gets worse. They also forget God, they also give up God. They start to worship to other idols, go to other temples, go to other places to seek for miraculous healing. They, they forgot about God. Why? Because their heart is not like the heroes of faith. They want it now. They want the healing now. They want their life to be extended now. They forget to realize, brothers and sisters, whether they seek this God and God will eat. The Lord doesn't want you to live longer. You can do whatever you want. You come back to square one. You have lost God because you abandoned Him. You renounce Him. And yet your life is still the same. That's a silly thing to do. Let it not be in your situation, in your case, in the year 2023. Believe in God. Remember those people who were thrown into the fire, fiery furnace. And what did they say to Nebuchadnezzar? No, oh, great king. Whether God rescue us or not, we will still believe in our God. Yeah, eventually God released them. God brought them out from the fiery furnace and the tiger, the hungry lion. But beloved brothers and sisters, they already say whether we live or die, we continue to believe. Rather than if Lord, if you don't heal me, Lord, if you don't answer me, who are you to blackmail God? Ah? Who, who do you think you are to negotiate with God? No, brothers and sisters. Remember how Jesus suffered and died for his people. You should be humble. When it's time to go, go. The best thing for your family, for you, is to go. Rather than struggling on, waste more money for the hospital fees. Waste more money for your medical bills. And yet, at the same time, showing a bad example as a Christian. 
No, brothers and sisters, submit yourself to God. It is so be in the year 2020. But I believe in better things for you. Surely the Lord will give all of you good health and strength to help us all together to build this church in the new year. The second lesson I want to draw your attention to about this group of heroes of faith is this. Beloved brothers and sisters, do you realize that all of them have something in common? All of them live for the same invisible city. Look at what you are told there in chapter 11 of Hebrews and verse 10. For Abraham was looking forward to the city that had foundation, whose architect and builder is God. Now verse 14. Now those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. Go down to verse 16. But they now desire a better place, a heavenly place. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Abraham, Moses, Joseph, Samuel, David, whatever their name, whether they were a king, whether they were a slave, whether they were rich, whether they were poor, they were all seeking for the same city. Whether they are called John, Peter, or they are called Paul, they all work for and they all look forward to and they were preparing themselves to face the new city. What about you? What do you live for in this life? As you go to school to study, as you go to work, as you man all the duties God has appointed to you to look after your mother, to look after your father in this lifetime, it's not easy to be a caregiver, you know, very tiring. But what do you really live for? What are you seeking for in this life? They all look for city. What about you? What city are you looking for? Is Singapore the only city you know? You know that city that Jesus talks about? Is that place where Jesus says he's preparing a place for his people? Is that place precious to you? Do you hope to be there? Do you want to be there? Oh, beloved brothers and sisters, many young people in the world today, they seek for the progression in their career, a good investment return for their investment, and they seek for entertainment. You know, we have a friend who spends a lot of money each year to follow their pop singing group as they travel at home concerts all around the world. When the, when the group goes to Japan, the person will book the air ticket, book the hotel to be as near to the venue as possible, and then go. And go for what? To hear the same group of people singing the same song everywhere. There are people like that, they are willing to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to follow their pop groups. And people actually wait outside for hours upon hours to look at their, I know, their favorite Korean star visiting Singapore. And then when they see them walking past, just a glimpse of ah! oh, it look like as if they are all, they are all in a front. What is happening to you? Why are you not working? Why are you not doing something productive? Why are you wasting your time in under the umbrella, under the hot sun to look, take a glimpse at a person in real life? What does it help you? Hey, none of your business, more. That's how I want to spend my life. That's how I want to spend my. That brings me entertainment and. That brings me happiness. So, he will tell you that if you tell them the stupidity of their investment of time. Because this is the only world they know. They forget that their pop star, their movie star will grow old one day. No more pretty, no more handsome one day. Do you know, brothers and sisters, that this is a dying world? Don't put too much hope in this world. Everything around you is decaying, and that includes you. You're going to see grey hair, you're going to see more hair dropping from your head, you're going to see line appearing even after your most expensive facial alama still comes. You're going to have a tummy no matter how many days you spend at our gym. Oh, brothers and sisters, take note of this. This is a dying world. Many people have placed their future and investment in this world, but they are going to be deeply disappointed. 
do not do the same for you in the year 2023. Listen to what Job, Job chapter 1 and verse 21 says. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will live this life. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Remember that, brothers and sisters. So important. Because that's what you learn from the heroes of faith. They did not live for this life. They did not seek anything per impermanent in this life. They seek for the city, the invisible city, whose builder and architect is God. And I hope that you do the same in everything. When you talk to your grandchildren, when you talk to your children, when you talk to yourself, your loved ones, you remind them of a better world, a better future. Don't always talk about how to make money, how to prosper, how, to, how clever your investment is. Brothers and sisters, there is an elder who is known to be a very good investment expert. And he has become very, very rich. People go to him not because they want to hear about that city or about Jesus. They go near to him and they like to spend time with him because they want to hear investment secrets from him. So that they can be like him, this elder, this rich elder. Beloved brothers and sisters, that's going to church for the wrong reason, isn't it? Because if it's, it is God who allows you to be rich or poor. If God appoints your life to be poor, you can do all you like. You're going to remain poor. You're going to be very unhappy. You're going to be very jealous. Somebody we know came from China. And when she first came from China, she had to rent people's house, a small tiny little room. She was mistreated, she was being yelled at, she brought along her only son and the mother and son lived in that small room. They were not allowed to speak too loudly, they were not allowed even to come out, they were not allowed even to use the kitchen. They were so badly treated when they came. Today, they live in a huge private property, drive the biggest Mercedes brand new car. So we be jealous of that, hey, you, when you came at me, 30 years ago, you were so poor, well, today you are so big and so unfair, isn't it? But it is God, do we not believe in God? God sees it, it is God! So you can be as jealous as you like, that's not going to change the situation, isn't it? Because God holds every one of our lives in His hands. Brothers and sisters, how will you live in the year 2023? Will you seek this invisible city where Jesus is? Because it's soon coming. The last lesson I call your attention to this morning very quickly is found in verse 17 to verse 19. Here you read about Abraham. And listen carefully what you have told about Abraham. He says in verse 17, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, he offered up Isaac. He received the promises, and yet he was offering his only begotten son, the one to whom it had been said, your offspring will be traced to Isaac. He considered God, listen, to be able even to raise someone from the dead. Therefore he received him back, figuratively speaking. You realize that Abraham did not understand Jesus correctly because he lived in a time before Jesus was born. But he was able to understand that God is going to do something miraculous. That the Messiah will rise again from the dead. And because he believed in that, when God said, Sacrifice your son Isaac, your personal son, he was willing to do it. Not because he hated the son, no. No, because he believed that God, if God is able to raise the Messiah from the dead, so he will be able to raise my son from the dead. You see that? He in other words, brothers and sisters, Abraham was looking for the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only was he and the heroes of faith looking for the same city, they were looking for the same Christ, the one who will rise from the dead. That's what you are told. If you will come to 1 Peter chapter 1, that's what Peter tells you about the Old Testament prophets and the heroes of faith. Long before Jesus was born, you are told there in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10-11, to 11, concerning this salvation, the prophets, Old Testament prophets, who prophesied
prophesies about the grace that will come to you, search and carefully investigate it. They inquire into what time or what circumstances the Spirit of Christ within them was indicating when he testified in advance to the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. The Old Testament prophets, they were looking forward to the suffering of Christ and the glories that would follow. But the Christ has not come. But they already believe in God. They could understand the gospel message in the Old Testament. They could understand. They were looking forward to the coming of the same Christ. People say the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, different God. No, same God. They were looking for different city. No, same city. They were looking for different Savior. No, same Savior. They are all looking the same. You remember what we are told about the Old Testament uh, prophet in the time of our Lord Jesus birth? We return to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. Look at what you are told there about Simeon. Simeon, in chapter 2, at verse 28 to verse 30. Simeon took Christ, the baby Jesus, up in his arm, praised God, and said, Now, Master, you can dismiss your servant in peace as you promised. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Because it's like all Old Testament people, he believed in what God promised. What did God promise? God promised that he would send the Messiah and that the Messiah would be born soon. But nobody knew when or where. And Simeon was alive. Simeon believed that he, he also believed and was looking forward to that birth. And he was becoming older and older. And he knew that his time would soon be over. But nonetheless, he believed that God would send the Messiah. And one day, I'm told to him, but with his own eyes, he could carry that the Holy Spirit prompted in him and say, the person, the people for so many hundreds of years looking forward to is now in your arms, in your very hand. The Savior is born. Can you imagine the tremendous joy that developed in his heart? He cannot hold himself. I can't believe it. I waited all these years and my ancestors waited all these years. We will obey. Is now in my hand. Can you believe that? The baby Jesus in his hand. Beloved brothers and sisters, God made so many promises to his people. Will you hold Jesus in your hand too? And know that he had indeed come. He took him up in his arms. He praised God. And he said, Lord, or oh Master, you can dismiss your servant in peace as you promised. He has seen the salvation of the world. These people, they all saw the Lord Jesus Christ in symbols and types of the Old Testament. But you do not see Jesus in types and symbols. You saw him in fulfillment and in person. You, in the Bible, you read about how he lived and how he loved and how he promised that he will come back again after his ascension to heaven. Beloved brothers and sisters, will you join the heroes of faith in walking with Jesus? And so important it is in this season, brothers and sisters, as you live in the new year 2023, with this first day of the new year with you now, you are now in the first day of the new year. Will you always remember the heroes of faith? That they were people who experienced the same struggles that you experience every day with people, with human beings, with themselves, with sin. Let it be that you are also like them. You look for the same city. Yeah, you are in Singapore. Yeah, you have so many excitement in front of you. But above everything else, in your career, in your work, in your problems, in whatever, people can see So and so. Is living for a different city. It may be true that you are looking for the coming of Jesus Christ. Samuel did, Simeon did, isn't it? May all of you do. Let us pray.